everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Poisson distribution. And the Poisson distribution is a non-negative integer value distribution that takes on the value zero, one, two, three, four, up to infinity. So all non-negative integers, and it's a really good distribution for counting things. In fact, it often describes the number of times that an event occurs in a particular period of time. So for example, suppose you stand at a busy intersection for one hour and you count the number of red cars you see go by. Let's assume that's well-defined and there's not a partially red car. Let's assume we can define a red car. So you stand there for an hour and count the number of red cars to go by. This has no upper bound. And as a counting random variable, there's a very good chance you're going to want to model it with the Poisson distribution. So unlike our other distributions, I am not going to build this one up from scratch. I'm going to give you the probability mass function, which might look a little weird, and then try to convince you why it's a good model for a lot of things. The Poisson probability mass function has one parameter called lambda, and this is any real number greater than zero. And then if x has a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, that means that the probability that x equals some little x is e to the minus lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial. And that holds for x equals 0, 1, 2 on up. And the probability is 0 otherwise. So we write x has the distribution, squiggly line, Poisson, lambda. Okay, so the Poisson distribution, we've talked about it counting the number of events in a fixed period of time, but it can also be used to count a number of events, um, spatial events occurring in a fixed amount of space, and usually when events are considered rare. Rare has several formal definitions, but I just mean a very small probability event. And I have an example coming up. So one example that's usually given as a Poisson random variable is the number of typos on any given page of a book, like a big book, like War and Peace. Open up to a random page and look for typos. Been around a long time. A lot of people have been looking for it. So let's say you look at my book, <laughs> and which does have a lot of typos. Open it up to a random page. The Poisson distribution is not a bad model of the number of typos because supposedly they're rare, but that should raise some red flags for you because the Poisson distribution does not have an upper bound. And yet the number of typos on the page of a book is going to be finite, depending on how you define typo. I think any way you define typo, it's going to be finite. So should we really be using a Poisson distribution to count typos? Yes. It's not a bad model. And the reason is the Poisson distribution's connection to the binomial distribution. So let me go to another example, and then we can think about the book again. Suppose I have a one acre, a perfectly square one acre plot of land, and I have 1 million seeds, grass seeds, and I scatter them completely at random and uniformly over that acre, which is really hard to do in practice. So there's no wind. And somehow I did it in a way that the seeds are equally likely to fall anywhere. Now I'm gonna pick a particular one square inch piece of this acre, which is actually very small. So one square inch is 1.59-ish times 10 to the negative seven uh, acres. And I want to count out of my million seeds, how many seeds fall into this little piece of land. That's a rare event. Uh, it's really hard to fall in there because the acre is so big compared to the little one square inch piece of land. And if they're truly uniformly spread out, then the probability of falling in that little piece is the same for every seed. And you can think of falling in that little box as a success and outside as a failure and you've got a fixed number of trials. We have 1 million trials or 1 million seeds that we're scattering, and each one could be success or failure, falling in that little one by one piece of land or not. Again, we have one acre of land, 
we have one square inch of land that is 1.59423 times 10 to the negative seven acres. The probability that any given seed out of those 1 million trials falls in that one square inch is that area versus the entire area. So if we decide to go with the units of acres, that's going to be 1.54, sorry, 1.59423 times 10 to the minus seven acres divided by one acre. So that's the success probability when we define success as falling in that little square inch. Again, the number of trials is 1 million. And I would say that getting seeds in that one particular spot is a rare event. So let's let X be the number of seeds that fall into that one square inch of land that has a binomial distribution with parameters N and P. And here N is 1 million and P is 1.59-ish times 10 to the minus seven. And so we can, we know, we know the exact distribution for X, but computing that probability is going to be difficult computationally because factorials get really, really large. And so I wanna show you a way to approximate a binomial distribution with a Poisson distribution. In order to do this, we need a lot of trials so this is an approximation that makes sense as n gets very large and in fact goes off to infinity. We also need the success probability to be very small for that event of success to be rare. And I'm gonna make it small in a very specific way. I'm going to let lambda be a non-negative real number and then I'm gonna define p to be lambda over n. So as n gets larger, the success probability gets smaller. Now, here is the probability mass function for the binomial distribution. And here it is with me plugging in P equals lambda over N. I wanna let N go to infinity, look at a limit here. And before doing that, I have to remind you of two limits. So I think I made this one on the top look more complicated than it needs to be. The point is this, if you have a polynomial over another polynomial, if the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is smaller than that in the denominator, the denominator is going to blow up faster and the whole fraction is going to go down to zero. And if the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, then the numerator is going to blow up faster, making the whole fraction blow up and go to infinity. But if you have the same degree in the top and the bottom, maybe you have a polynomial of degree two in the top and bottom, then the limit is the lead coefficient on top over the lead coefficient on the bottom. Another really important limit is how we define e to the x. e to the x is defined in a few ways, but it is defined as a limit like this. It is 1 plus x over n raised to the nth power. So if you can let n go to infinity on the inside first, you would have 1 plus something that's going to 0. You would then have 1 to the nth power, which is just 1. Uh, but you can't take the limit separately. So if the number inside is greater than one, as it always is until n reaches infinity, then you're actually taking powers of a number greater than one, which should be blowing up. So they have to move at the same time. And if you have sort of perfect balance, it will not blow up or go to one. It will actually be the function e to the x. Once again, here is our binomial probability mass function rewritten with P equals lambda over N. And we're gonna take the limit as N goes to infinity. And we know what we wanna see because I kind of gave it away as a spoiler. We wanna see the Poisson distribution probability mass function, which is E to the minus lambda, lambda to the X over X factorial. So if you break up this one minus lambda over N to the N minus X into one minus lambda over N to the N, times one minus lambda over n to the negative x. And just look at the part with the n exponent. This in the limit is e to the minus lambda. It's just like we had on the previous slide, except x is negative lambda. So that's that part of the limit. Here is the probability mass function once more. Here is the one minus lambda over n to the nth power pulled out front. I pulled x factorial out front because it's not going to be changing in n and wrote the rest of it down like this. So this first piece right here is going to e to the minus lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial as n goes to infinity. The lambda to the x and x factorial are just sitting there 
And as n goes to infinity, the other piece turns into e to the minus lambda. So I hope that the rest of this expression goes to one. This last term over here, there's only an n inside on the fraction. It's one minus lambda over n raised to the negative x. Because there's only one n, there's no uh, racing or comparing between the limits inside and outside moving at the same time. So we can take the limit of the inside as n goes to infinity, we'll get one minus something that's really, really small and going to zero. So we'll end up with one and we can raise that to the negative x power and that's still one. But this piece, I'm a little worried about this piece. I hope it goes to one. So let me write this out a little differently. What I'm gonna do between this slide and the next slide is I'm going to write out that n factorial as n, n minus one, n minus two, all the way down to one. And I'm gonna write the n minus x factorial out as n minus x, n minus x minus one, n minus x minus two, all the way down to one. And there's a lot of cancellation. So what I'm gonna be left with is in the numerator, n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to n minus x plus one. And in the denominator where I had n to the x, Notice that there's x terms uh, in that leftover from canceling those factorials. So I'm gonna put each one of these n x's in with a different one of those, uh, those terms. Okay, so uh, we end up with n over n, n minus one over n, n minus two over n, et cetera. And these are all degree one polynomials. If you look at each ratio separately, and so we can find the limit by taking the lead coefficient on top over the lead coefficient on the bottom. So the lead coefficient for this first one is one, both in the top and bottom. And that means the limit goes to one. And let's look at one more. In the second one, the lead coefficient on top is one and on the bottom is one. So as n goes to infinity, this goes to one in the limit. And that is true for all of these individual terms here. So this product is just going to one. We started with a binomial. We let p be lambda over n. We let n go to infinity, which affected not only p getting small, but the n for the binomial getting large. And we ended up with the probability mass function for a Poisson random variable. So if you go back to our acres and seed example, I wouldn't want to have to compute that, that binomial probability with a 1 million factorial. Uh, you're going to be really, really close if you use a Poisson distribution instead. And this is also the motivation for people using the Poisson distribution in other cases like typos in a book when there's really only possibly a finite number of typos on the page and yet the Poisson distribution has infinite support. Okay, so we are done with finding new discrete random variables or distributions for the moment. We eventually wanna talk about continuous distributions, but first, in the next video, we're going to talk about expected value, expectation, and the mean of a distribution. So I hope to see you there.